Tim tries to go on the offense after he lost it and said, whoopsie, about um, the music. Uh, that was the other yeah. completely high school thing he was focused on, us making fun of his music. So he, he knew that he got a little emotional and was a bit embarrassed about it. And so he's trying to go on the offensive later in the interview, um, particularly this kind of half-baked uh, gray zone-esque, Greenwald-esque conception of the left is now pro-war and the right is anti-war. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my opinion, this was one of the more revealing moments in the debate. Yeah. Ukraine and take territory without recourse, then, I mean, that's pro-imperialism. That's not, uh, and that's still no, pro-war. No, uh, yes, it a is. lot of people a lot of, around the world do a lot of bad things. I don't think the U.S. should be an empire going and funding wars all over the world. We're not funding wars. We're funding the defense. I mean, like, and, and there's a, there's something that you can be said where, where should we draw a certain line? I have already conceded that strings should be attached and we should be involved in peace negotiations. But let's, to, let's, to, to, to flatten the power dynamics here, I mean, I would imagine this is like the same argument that you hear uh, when it comes to Israel and Palestine, right, where Palestinians are defending themselves and then it's, oh, my gosh, uh, they are just compl- it's completely symmetrical. Uh, Israel and Palestine. These are two actors just battling it out. To no, favor of intervention one, there? No, I would love to fund Palestinians so that they were able to have a better life You are life to the right of me on foreign policy. Well, we already fund Israel, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you against that? That's a tougher question. I don't have an answer uh, to. Okay, go back. You're not going to. You're not going to make me address. You are to the right. The of me. recipient, the the recipient of the Ooh. largest amount of military aid that we have given on a consistent basis for decades. You're not going to ask me to answer that question, are you? And there was like a two minute lead up to this where he was like, "You're, you're to the right of me. You're to the right of me. You're to the right of me." And I was like, "No, I'm not. No, I'm not." Uh, because I was uh, in favor. Because the weapons that are being created, that are being sent to Ukraine, are made by the military industrial complex. Um, and he didn't have much to say to <laughs> Wait, that. Right. Uh, so what did he say after that? Is there any more? To yeah, that let's clip? keep oh going. Oh, my God. It is so hilarious. Uh, wh- why are you supporting DeSantis over Trump? Because uh, 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 of an ad. AI. Uh, uh, yeah. AI, AI ad and uh, his policies. Uh, he's colossally what? stupid, though. Like, to follow up that question of like, oh, you think we should intervene there? Like, that's such a uh, like, no, she's clearly talking about <laughs> the amount of the right. The analogy that we found. Yeah, no, of course. He's not. I mean, he's not very bright. Yes. I mean, we, I mean that's that's quite clear but uh it's also funny how he thinks like i can avoid taking a position on any uh issue that is actually the fundamental ones that may or may not alienate my audience not funding wars we're funding the defense i mean and and there's a there's something that you can be said where where should we draw a certain line i have already conceded that strings should be attached and we should be involved in peace negotiations but to, 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 to flatten the power dynamics here i mean i would imagine this is like the same argument that you hear uh when it comes to israel and palestine right where Palestinians are defending themselves and then it's oh my gosh uh they are just complete it's completely symmetrical uh Israel and Palestine these are two actors just battling it out to no favor of intervention one there. I would love to fund Palestinians so that they were able to have a better you are life to the right of me on foreign policy well we already fund Israel dude yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you against that? That's a tougher question. I don't have an answer to. <laughs> <laughs> then you're in favor of funding uh, no, military. No, 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 no. We fund the Iron Me Dome. literally saying we fund their I military don't industrial know complex. Anything enough about it? Then if and it's I your principle and you're anti-war, then you should be saying then we should cut Israel funding for Israel defense can say simply, right now. I lean ag- I said that's why I said 99. percent I'll say I absolutely lean against providing uh, military aid to to Israel. I just don't know. Uh, I will say a oh, new really war in, in Ukraine. That. He's really engaged in it. It's, oh, we've only been doing that. It has only been the biggest recipient of our military aid for decades. Yeah, it's only like a one of the Single. three foundational planks of foreign policy that I think most people like to comment on right. there. Um, but like, but like the key uh, like third rail of like Democrat uh, Democrat primary politics often like. Yeah, just but I, I'll brush up on that at some point. Yeah, and I don't know what if Tim you mean has you a, haven't done deep dive into the latest uh, crime situation that took place. <laughs> this uh, black guy, yeah. did, yeah. a black guy, guy did once. in uh, in Illinois. You don't know the details of that? Are you kidding me? Yeah. 
But uh, funding Israel, I haven't really looked Look, into that. I've gone into the uh, qualitative uh, data of every time a mentally ill person has pushed somebody onto the subway tracks in New York. And uh, yes. let's get into the deep dive of each of those. But uh, whether we should keep giving money to Israel, you know what? I never really encountered that. Never as thought question. about it. Never thought about it. was an issue. Well, I am the principled anti-war person on here. What um, else do you say? Hey, you're to the right of me. Yeah. Let's, I mean, I don't remember what he says after this, but... Uh, the whole lead up to it was him saying that uh, the left is is the right wing pro war party at that point. But here we go. Israel, I just don't know. Uh, I will say a new war in Ukraine in a territory that we are not. You not. know what? The United <laughs> States should not have started that war in you. Oh, right. It wasn't. Yeah. And I, I later say, look, we have to be very diligent about uh, nefarious actors not making it into some sort of proxy battle to weaken Putin and then he eventually just moves on from it so yeah well, that's um, more uh, yeah intricate than he was willing to get it's, yeah uh, that, I mean it really shows how uh, surface level and insincere totally. some of the anti-war shit is on the right yes totally absolutely it also shows like how uh, Tim has been able to do this for so long with having seemingly the he has no depth when it comes to anything that involves policy. If it involves like the the minute details of essentially like a a story that really fundamentally ends up being about gossip, right? Because he's not looking at like you could take a principled uh, notion of like I've done a lot of uh, research on this and I found that actually uh, pictorial uh, representations of sexual acts should not be introduced to students until they're in 12th grade that you can tell them but uh pictorial acts in some way alienate different students or blah 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 he hasn't done any research into this at all he's never in he's never he, he's never in in any way done any uh investigation into what sex ex, uh, sex ed experts say yep. and then the the other thing is like it is a an actual position that I don't that that someone could say I don't believe in sex ed for students whatsoever. That is an actual position. I happen to agree with it. I mean disagree with it F fundamentally. I think it's dangerous for kids. I think it's dangerous for society. I think it it leads to more teen pregnancies. I think it leads to more STDs. I think it leads to uh, to personal shame and ostracizing and, and a whole host of emotional issues uh, without getting and and in addition to like protecting their own bodily autonomy. But certainly fundamentalists make that argument about sex ed, but he won't make that argument because he's disingenuous or stupid or both. Yeah, because he knows that he can't quite make that argument and articulate it, but he also can't substantiate what he thinks. He calls it kink. Yep. Oral sex is kink. And well, but, but, if, but, if like, gay I mean, people are doing like, it, that's like, what it is. But like, like, let's just assume like whatever he his an actual definition of kink might be. But the idea of oral sex being kink, that is like people are laughing at that idea from like the fifties. Yeah. Like, that's how you say, like, my old man thinks that oral sex is kink. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. That is a joke. Yeah. And then later in that part about Israel, he gets, he, the the other guest actually kind of sides with me. I mean, Brandon from Kentucky wrote, writes, and I forgot about this. I thought it was funny in the debate when you explained to him that the no-fly zone is a de facto act of war. And then teams, uh, Tim seemed unaware that the denuclearization treaty with Ukraine, uh, when the other incel took your side about project protecting that treaty, Tim's only response was actually, I don't care. Um, right. So, and my point was that that we, a pro, an anti-war position is in favor of denuclearization and making sure that we have less of a nuclear arsenal in the world. And so the fact that our treaty in 1993 uh, was, we will defend you, Ukraine, if you get rid of your nuclear weaponry, that is diplomacy and one that also is, did, uh, yeah, yeah. Did what? he say, I know I thought that I had a dream about this, but did he say that it's more like a family, like you don't have to be beholden to that? Or did I dream, honestly dream that? No, I think you dreamed it, but he did say at some, at some, he's like, I don't care. About I, treaties. He didn't give a shit about yeah, He was treaties. like, I don't care about like treaties that. and I don't Wait, think yeah, that you should be said, making like, promises. Did he family change? Did he no, no, like, no, no, like, no, 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 no. The treaty's no. not important? No, no, he didn't oh. say that. I must have had some type of dream about that. Oh, uh, yeah. But it was like, yeah, but who cares we made a treaty? Yeah, right.
Um, well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, yeah. how do if you can't make a treaty with the if you can't? I mean, like, that's this, how Kissinger and Nixon thought of treaties. Like, it only matters as long as we want to enforce it. <laughs> I mean, and we saw this with the Iran deal. I mean, that was in a completely uh, a, a major mistake by the United States pulling out of that under Trump. Um, abiding by our treaties is a really important thing in terms of being actually substantively anti-war because it means that people trust the United States to engage in good faith diplomacy without completely pulling the rug out from under them when they make promises. That's what treaties entail. Uh, do we got any more on this or should we, uh, what do you, what do you think? I'm in the, I'm, I'm, I'm pooled. I'm not, you're pooled I'm, out. I'm, I'm done from swimming in the pool. I know. It's just the, the what, what else do we have? The pedophilia th- one is just like. Wh- I think like um, we should keep it on that. I guess the only thing that's interesting is the with the abortion coke. Uh, Wait a thing, second. Or- Data says no. Tim Pool did relate it to like a family. Oh, okay. I don't remember about that. the. Uh, uh, I mean that that was. I honestly thought that I had dreamt it because it was one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean the idea that treaties are irrelevant and that when there's a new administration in the rest of the world should presume that our treaties are null and void is one of the dumbest things i think i've ever heard anybody who spends even moments contemplating politics could ever even articulate yeah the idea that treaties are only to last for the length of an administration you and he equated it, I think now, honestly, like I thought I, ha- I thought I dreamt this because it's so stupid that like when people die they're they, the, the, you know, their, their promises don't go down to their kids. It was about, Jer- yeah, right. The treaty is not made between the president <laughs> of one country and another. It is made between countries. Now yeah. I would agree that if the country goes away, the treaty becomes null and void. But to articulate the idea that agreements made by people who could die is the same as agreements made by... Will you play this? Because I honestly, this was so dumb that I thought that I dreamt this happened. Okay. And, and to be fair, like we were, we, uh, you know, I was You're prepping, preparing for the show. The show, the show yeah. So I was like half li- listening, but I, I just remember going like, wait, wait, what? And then like, gosh, oh, shit, I gotta do the industry and there's always going to be it should be much it should be severely cut into but the united states by the way made a promise in 1993 to ukraine that we would defend them if they denuclearize that's true so that is part of what we're doing in this instance that's true too and and i think that's an interesting question about upholding our obligations that i uh I don't disagree with that's it, it would be very difficult for us granted the issue was i think i'm like a little kid i'm like seven years old when something like that happens and now in my name you know we we engage in this conflict and war i think it's fair to say that while i can understand that treaty exists as a now adult who is paying tax into this i have the right to object to past agreements that weren't made by me uh that being said pause incidentally just, he he was not involved in any of this this is like one of the standard things about being a citizen of a country yeah like um all of these existing treaties existed before we were born and they will exist after we die theoretically and there's a whole host of things that happen when you were seven yeah i mean this is honestly like Child this is stuff. this is uh, like I, I i thought i dreamt how stupid this was uh, because i didn't think it could actually your be brain rejected it. Yeah. yeah it keep going this it gets even worse my point on this one was specifically i see all these ukrainian flags and profiles i make a comment in agreement <laughs> with hassan where i was like he was right about mr beast and then i was talking about military intervention oh, can we go back high school. did we high just school. did we high just school. skip three minutes of him talking about i mean he goes on and says we should not be engaged in this war in ukraine you give him one fact that he claims to be aware of that we made an obligation in 93 maybe it was 94 to um to protect uh ukraine if they gave up all of their nuclear weapons wait wait no keep, keep it but wait i want to see how he went from answering her question to talking about mr, mr. Beast, beast whoever that is on 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 twitch he's really big with teenagers sam i mean <laughs> believe it who cares about what's in someone's twitter bio relative to so the many question? ukrainian flags 
uh, it's amazing the uh, the level this guy operates on industry and there's always going to be it should be much it should be severely cut into but the united states by the way made a promise in 1993 to ukraine that we would defend them if they denuclearize that's true so yeah. that is part of what we're doing in this instance that's true too and and i think that's an interesting question about upholding our obligations that i uh, uh I don't disagree with that's it, it would be very difficult for us granted the issue was i think i'm like a little kid i'm like seven years old when something like that happens and now in my name you know we we engage in this conflict and war i think it's fair to say that while i can understand that treaty exists as a now adult who is paying tax into this i have the right to object to past agreements that weren't made by me uh, that being said i just uh, my point on this one was specifically I see all these Ukrainian flags and profiles. <laughs> I make a comment in agreement with Hassan where I was like, he was right about Mr. Beast. And then I was talking about I'll military wait. intervention and how it's wrong. And We're spending $100 billion on this war in Ukraine. We shouldn't be doing it. And then he laughed at me. And I'm just like, genuine question. When did it become, or maybe I was always wrong. When I was at like Occupy or doing these like anti-Iraq war protests back in the 2000s, I thought okay, that it was the left. It, 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 like it need, need, need to... Uh, yeah, let's get to the family part. I mean, this guy's, I mean, it, it is honestly like it, it is the the confluence between, you know, well, it's true. We did make a commitment mm -hmm. to Ukraine. But that said, when I went down to the cafeteria and I specifically said to Billy that I was going to sit next to him today because he promised me because on Tuesday he let Kenny sit there mm -hmm. and I went down to sit next to Billy and Kenny was there again. Yep. And I made it clear, didn't I say last week that I was going to get to sit next to you and he wouldn't let me do it. So... <laughs> And Kenny said my skate park wasn't that cool. <laughs> and, just, and also that my music center wasn't liar. cool. And I will say this, too. The slime that he sells, it's supposed to have sparkles in it. It doesn't. The sparkles he has in it are not nearly as good as the sparkles that um, uh, Peter sells <laughs> in his slime. Yeah, and uh, just to clarify some of the confusion ideologically, like I thought the left was just that the left doesn't uh, object to war on the kind of like, ooh, I'm an adult who pays taxes now and yes. it's too expensive. The objection to war is that it kills people and Corson society. <laughs> yes. All right, so wait, so this is now about where he's saying about all treaties should be null and void if they exist longer than I've been an adult. Mm -hmm and had the third largest nuclear weapon stockpile. Right. And in exchange for giving it up, there were security guarantees. Now, if you're worried about nuclear proliferation in other countries that might lead to a nuclear war, protecting or making sure that they can maintain their territorial integrity, just as an example to other countries that might want to denuclearize in the future, uh, is a worthwhile stake. And I think I understand that position. Like, it makes perfect sense, in my opinion. I understand it. Uh I don't care though, right? So it's kind of like what? if um, some dude cut a deal with, like someone in my family cut a deal with someone else and then 30 years later they walk up and say, you, you know your, your dad system? told me that if I ever had this problem, you were gonna take care of me, I'd be like, I'm not my dad, I'm sorry. Like governments change, policies change. And the idea that because 30 uh, years ago, someone cut you a promise means that I now have to spend $200 billion defending you. The people of this generation who are inheriting this country did not agree to that. No, it's fine. Right. Now, pause it. Now, I, honestly, th this is really important. If you are in any way a fan of Tim Pool's, if you look to him for any sort of the knowledge outside of like, you know, I don't know uh, which uh, which. Uh, trucks you should have on your mm -hmm. skateboard. Even then, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I guess qualified. second opinion. I'm not qualified to to assess that. But the analogy he's making here is so dense and so unthoughtful and unserious. You can say there are treaties, but treaties are not entered to by an, a specific politician or a specific uh, government. It Otherwise, is treaties the, would never happen because people know that an election is coming up. The country gets into the tree it gets it, there are representatives of the country who sign it but it is a country it's not your dad it's not your uncle although with that said no when tim pool dies his estate will have liabilities or will have claims that will be carried out one way or another in his death but the point is is that that analogy is so dense it shows such a fundamental lack of even like you can say some treaties are bad and some treaties are good but and we should get out of a treaty and this and that but to say that treaties just on their face are a bad thing 
because they exist too long is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard yeah. someone who thinks that they are smart say. But it's also somebody who thinks they're smart and also has to appeal to a Donald Trump audience. Donald Trump, who basically took that approach to the Iran deal, which mm. made the world basically unsafe and more prepared for war. He, he got us out of the treaty, but he recognized that the treaty existed. <laughs> right, yeah. right? Like, I mean, like Tim doesn't even ex recognize the validity of the existence of treaties. It was a huge mistake for Donald Trump to quit the treaty. Uh, we are going to be in a far worse position when we make a new one with Iran because of it. They're going to have exceeded. I mean, that was a very, very bad choice. Another treaty but, based on trying to get a country to not produce nuclear weaponry. Right. But but there was problems in Europe and it undercut our ability to to do future treaties and the dude right across the table uh you know explained it well to him if you want other countries to give up their nukes in the future and you do not uh stick to your obligations why would they do it well i think he was to be fair to me i think he was paraphrasing my argument from earlier so maybe that's why it was made so well hey actual well, justice war cosine yes appreciate it buddy. Hey, fred fred horowitz freedom center cosines emma Vigland. yes <laughs> all right let's just go further because i mean honestly this is so monumentally dumb that i honestly thought i had dreamt it <laughs> i know <laughs> someone cut you a promise means that i now have to spend 200 billion dollars defending you the people of this generation who are inheriting this country did not agree to that now it's fine so you, what does that it. say to people who might be manufacturing their own nuclear weaponry that it right. doesn't it, that the promises made by the world superpower don't really matter um, and yeah, I, don't, I don't like the idea you of shouldn't necessarily being this, trust like, it. world superpower. Like, I agree. My, 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 my views it probably differ from you in that regard. I'm, I'm more so like, I think it'd be great if we brought jobs back here, if we uh, protected the middle class, maybe had stronger uh, workers' rights. Um, oh, 100%. I'm, maybe, you want to talk unions? I'm in favor of that. Tariffs on uh, imports <laughs> he doesn't for want two to reasons. <laughs> the idea that we'd manufacture a car in China and then ship it on a boat over here just to waste energy because someone's willing to do it cheaper is nonsensical to Pause me. It. Just Sorry, this started with him saying he doesn't want us to be the world superpower, mm -hmm. and now we're doing like trade warfare against everybody? Uh, well, so. also, we should know that he must be very excited about what the Biden administration has done. Has done far more with in computer terms chips? of actually on-sourcing, uh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. U.S. sourcing. Um, Any the, day now. And stopping China from buying our chips it should be good. Yeah buy american so we need to we need to build up the incentives for all the manufacturing to happen here in the united states to create good jobs to protect the workers worry less about whether or not we're going to go blow up some foreign country a bunch of kids in it or something like that but i, I think i think uh like sort there's like a, the, yeah some, in like, other words we should make uh, treaties you know who else engages in treaties non-superpowers mm -hmm. in fact who is it that he thinks that we sign these treaties with